Hi, I'm Andrew Martin, Group Publisher, Asia Online Publishing Group, uh, the publisher of CybersecurityAsean.com. We're here at Tech Week, and right now I'm with uh, Arsalan from uh, CTM360. Um, and I have to admit, I haven't come across you guys before, so maybe you can just quickly tell us a little bit about the company. Well, thank you, Andrew, for having us. It's a pleasure being here. Uh, the event is uh, very well put together. And we're very excited to be part of this event. Uh, to give you a little background about CTM360, we're based in the Middle East, in, uh, in the Kingdom of Bahrain. And we're a technology company. We've been uh, building a lot of consolidated technology pieces over the last few years. And uh, there's a layered security approach that we follow. The whole idea was how can we technologically address different pain points which are out there, mm -hmm. including uh, things like the attack surface, external attack surface, things like digital uh, frauds which you periodically see. We love problem solving, so for everything there is a technological answer and our strongest suite is takedowns. So we love mm -hmm. doing takedowns, we have a dedicated system, the world's largest system to do takedowns yeah. as well. Okay, very interesting. So I and. You know, once um, we got in touch with you, we took a look at some of the solutions you do, and I, I was particularly interested um, in your cyber blind spot. And um, I actually wondered, you know, are individual companies um, actually being targeted from the deep and dark web? And if they are, what, what is it that you guys do to help? So the reality of the world is that organizations, big or small, in any industry, in any geography. Mm -hmm. They are uh, very attractive to the external threat actor. Mm -hmm. uh, Cyber Blind Spot is one proposition that we have that includes a lot of different uh, use case driven solutions or rather we're doing a lot of detections of the bad things in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, there are different synonyms to this space. So we do surface deep dark web monitoring, uh, brand protection anti-phishing, there's data leakage monitoring. Mm -hmm impersonation, fraud monitoring, you can call it different things, but mm -hmm. it is a reality. Individual companies are targeted, mainly because uh, it's financially very lucrative in today's world. Uh, so I would say no one is really immune. Mm -hmm. But to do uh, certain things, like the basics, right, organizations can accomplish a sense of cyber resilience if they do certain basic things. Mm -hmm. Things like understanding what do they own, reinforcing their digital presence, or taking action against a fraud or a threat which is out there. Mm -hmm. So if you're a little more proactive rather than reactive, then it, that does, we have seen that give, gets a lot of results quickly. Yeah. And is it the case that if you, if you don't have the right tools in place, you may not even know that you're being, say, your brand is being used out there against you? Is that, is that something that people are kind of almost ignorant to it? In, see, there is no prototype or the right answer yeah. uh, to the problem. Usually it's a people, process, technology oriented type of discussion. You might have an unlimited amount of budget, mm. but not the right administration mm. in terms of uh, the process behind it or making sure the tools are set up properly. Yeah. So what CTM360 initially wanted to do was uh, you know, deliver it in a way where the end user experience is very simplified. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've bridged managed services and technology together, mm -hmm. uh, uh, together so that the end user doesn't really have to do much work. Yeah. And in our space, we're very good and efficient at what we do. So that's ultimately the the way we want to address the problem. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess email has been with us for a long time. Um, w would you still agree that? Uh, email itself is one of the weakest links in like your cyber defense chain uh, and again you know I know you've got some email based solutions but maybe you can tell us about those as well yeah. so initially when email was built by design there was no security factored in mm. uh, security was considered more of a after the fact when people saw there were different uh, types of problems happening so one example is DMAR yeah. DMARC is a global framework out there. It stands for domain messaging, authentication, reporting, and conformance. There is a certain maturity cycle mm -hmm. to, to get DMARC in its best application or the best practice implementation done. That takes about three to six months to do mm -hmm. accurately, properly. So to answer your question, yes, email is a fact of life. Uh, security around email is not 
still fully fleshed out, but there has been a considerable amount of improvement. Yeah. And DMARC, the DMARC standard, I highly recommend it for every organization to prevent spoofing. Yeah. And of course, you know, do the basics right when it comes to email. You know, are you managing the gateway properly? Are your configurations done properly? Are you, uh, you know, uh, doing the the initial implementations right? Is your password hygiene managed? You know, in these times, a lot of username passwords are also being extracted out of the organization, and then the threat actor just logs into email accounts, monitors the email activity, and then they can construct a lot of different types of uh, attacks. Unfortunately, at yeah. today's time. Yeah, yeah, and I, and I guess it, it, even even beyond the technical side, you've even got the psychological side with phishing as well, right? Yes. So, uh, phishing is a age-old uh, thing. Uh, it's a reality of the world, and uh, what we encourage is you know you should get a vendor uh, that can actually find these for you and effectively dismantle all the phishing attacks uh, which are targeting your organization uh, because hardening. If you make yourself a harder target, it will. The idea is it will deflect the threat actor to a different, easier target. Yeah, low-hanging fruit. Low-hanging right? yeah, fruit. Yeah. So that's what our platform also aspires to do in the different aspects which I have covered. Yeah. Uh, don't be a low-hanging fruit or an easy target. Make do the basics right, and uh, you will see a, a hopefully a, a better network effect of that as well. As yeah. A result. Yeah. Understood. So um, very, very interesting stuff. Um, uh, appreciate you taking time to tell us a little bit about your offerings. Um, I guess last thing to ask you just, you know, what are you hoping to get from your participation at the show this week? Well, it's uh, lovely to be back in Singapore and, uh, you know, we're very open to having discussions with any type of partner, any type of end user, you know, decision makers, regulators. We work with all of these four different categories, yeah. uh, even like-minded companies, you know, good feed providers, we're very open to partnerships, we're very open to having discussions which help, you know, uh, propagate or at least uh, move this idea forward of uh, what I would broadly say is external security outside the firewall. Mm. So that's why our participation actually has been a pleasant surprise given uh, the footfall that we've seen. There's been a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of people who walk by our booth mm and uh, you know very high caliber people yeah good pleasant conversation so it's Ex been nice. excellent to hear so uh again once again thanks so much for spending the time with us uh, i hope that the rest of your time at the show is worthwhile uh, and um uh, again we'll uh, come back and look more into uh, their offerings uh, on uh, cybersecurityasian.com thank you